Hello everybody, so welcome to session one of this info drainage training. We're going to start with some navigation and importing of background data. So uh, when you launch info drainage, they'll come up with a splash welcome screen. Uh, you can just close that and get you back to the sort of screen that I'm looking at at the moment. It's divided into four sections. Across the top, we've got the usual menu items that you might expect in most software packages. Click on any one and it reveals a series of buttons underneath it. You'll notice that some of them are greyed out. Uh, the reason they're greyed out is either that they are not available to you because of the license type that you have, but more likely it's because they're not relevant at this time. So for example, not much of the results is available to me because I haven't built or simulated a model yet. So, so pretty standard that we'd expect to see on most software packages. On the left here, we have the tree view. Now this is where we manage everything. So later on, we'll be creating things or importing things. And once we do, they are listed on this left-hand side under this tree view. So if we want to edit something, copy something, delete something, then we would do it via this tree view here. So it's, it's basically where we manage all of our data. On the right here is the toolbox. And this is where we create things. So for example, if I look at the inflows, I can create a catchment area or a green roof in the plan view. And once I've created it, it would then be listed within the tree view. And like I say, I can then delete it or copy it or whatever I need to from there. And then of course, we've got this big space in the middle, which is our plan view, which is where we're gonna do most of our work. So the first thing we're gonna do is to import some background surface information. This isn't absolutely the first thing that we have to do. We can do this at any stage, but it's useful to do it now. It provides a good starting point, and also it is going to be used in things like the calculation of cover levels for our manholes, the top perimeters for some of our storage structures, including ponds, that kind of thing. So it's a good, good place to start. So if you're following the notes, we're now on section 1.1, the import of surface and background data. So, uh, like I said just now, the way that we import data, we can do some of it from the top menu, but we can also do it from this tree view. So to import some surface data, right click on it in the tree view here and load surface. Now this brings us through to this dialog box and you can see at the top there, it lists a variety of different formats that info drainage is compatible with. So for example, one of the most commonly used in the UK is this ASC data. So there is some data available for free in, in the UK, for example, uh, ordnance survey data. If you download that, then it's likely to come in ASC data and you just load it in. Uh, perhaps the simplest is the CSV or text file or Excel spreadsheets. What you're looking for there is simply three columns of data. So it's going to be Eastings, Northings and Levels or X, Y and Z. So we're just looking for a, basically a series of points which are together they're going to build into this um, over, overlaying sort of surface area. Um, there is also a info drainage specific format, which is this one here. Um, the advantage of that is simply that it's a lot quicker to load data from there rather than you're just loading it in rather than importing it. There's no conversion to be done. So the advice is to load it in one of any one of these data sources, whatever you have. And then once you've done that, do a save as it'll save the data. And then you, the next time you just need to load it in. OK, so in this particular example, uh, our data source is going to come from a CAD file. So just click on the CAD button and then you're asked to choose a choose a file, choose a directory. So I'm going to choose the one which is, as I described in the introduction, I've got some under a training directory and then info drainage introduction in my data directory. So this could be slightly different, but somewhere wherever you store the data directory underneath that, there should be one called surface one. It's actually a DXF file but um, CAD data basically. So select on that and select open, load it up, click next. Now, like a lot of uh, CAD data, it is stored in various layers, 
In this case, we don't need the zero layer. So we're just going to go for that, that one layer called the 3D model. That's all we need and press finish. Okay, and as you see, whatever data source it's coming from, it's going to load it up into these three columns, Easting, Northing and Level, or as I said, X, Y and Z. Um, now at this stage, we get the opportunity to save it. So I'm going to go for a save as, and I'm going to put it into the save work here directory. You can call it, call it what you like. I'm going to call it imported surface. Okay, and as I said, so this is an info drainage specific format. Save it. And now press OK. And we should see it now listed under the tree view. We can't yet see it in the plan view. Now there's two possible reasons why we can't yet see it. Firstly, it doesn't appear to be switched on. So I'm going to switch it on. And now we can see that it does appear. However, sometimes even when you switch this on, it won't... Um, necessarily appear and it's possible that you're just not zoomed in to the right place so you're not zoomed in to the data that you've just loaded if you have that situation if you're sure it's switched on but you still can't see it then there's a useful button here view extents which uh, allows you to view to the full extent of all the data that you have um, that you have currently loaded now your view probably looks quite different to mine um, what happens is uh, we can set up some colors, uh, we can describe exactly how we want the data to be displayed, and Info Drainage remembers those on each machine. So if this is the first time that you've used Info Drainage, there will be some defaults set up, but you then have the opportunity to customize from there, and those customizations are remembered. So as I said, that's, that's why my view probably looks quite different to yours. Now, while we're here, this is a good opportunity to learn how to sort of pan and zoom around. And you'll see there is these buttons on the toolbox. If you can't yet see them, you just need to expand the tools. So we've got band zoom that we would expect just, um, sorry, I'll just go back to the extents. So one advice is if you get lost at any time, just uh, go to view extents. So if we want to band zoom, just click and drag, draw out a little square and we zoom into that point. We can also, as you'd expect, just pan around, just move around. However, I have to say, I rarely use these buttons over in the toolbox. If I want to move around, uh, zoom in and out, then it's all done on the mouse wheel. So just ro rotate the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, or just hold it down to um, pan around. That's by far the easiest way. And I just mentioned it, but one very useful tool is if you're too far zoomed in or too far zoomed out or zoomed to the wrong place, then just by clicking on that view extents will take you back to the to the right place. Okay. Now within the tree view here, as I said, this is how we control and manage data. If you just expand that little cross next to the surface, we'll see that here we get the opportunity to describe various aspects of the, the surface. First thing I'm going to do is to switch off the contours so we can't see those anymore and also I can do things like switch off the legend, I can display it in 3D, that, that sort of thing. Now there was uh, one area, I think we saw it earlier, yeah you can see here as you zoom in there's a bit of data which is uh, look, just looks wrong, it's a different colour from the rest. Now I haven't investigated exactly why this is but my guess is there's probably some data missing and depending on your data source it may be recorded as a level of minus 999, something like that. So because of that, it sort of produced a sort of local sync and uh, we've got this big hole in the data. So it's messing up our thematic map of our, um, of our um, uh, surface. So one of the first things that we want to do is to delete that area. So the way that we do that is go into right click and edit the data from here. Go back into this. And then you've got this option to trim the data. Now I'm going to use it to cut out a bit of uh, what I think is erroneous data in the far west of the catchment here. However, one top tip again is that if you're working with large data sets, it can take a few seconds to load this data in. So good practice is to 
perhaps load in your various ASC tiles um, so they may cover quite a large area and it's always inevitable isn't it that when you're working on a site that site would uh, be at the junction of say four tiles and you just need the bit in the middle so so load in the four tiles initially that'll take some time but then trim it down and keep only that you what you want then save it as an info drainage specific format and then whenever you come to work at it work with it again you will just load it in and and it'll be very quick to load and, and move around so I'm going to trim this data gets me through to a dialog like this which matches my surface data you can see here these are all the individual X and Y points or Eastings and Northings now when it comes to trimming um, one of the slight sort of anomalies with this is we are selecting the bit that we want to keep not the bit that we want to discard so can you sort of click in the top left hand corner here and then draw out a square which covers most of it but misses out that bit in the far west because there was some problems with the data there so that's the bit we're going to keep press OK press OK again and we should see uh, we're going to overwrite this existing one it's always asking us so we've got a reduced data set but it's chopped out that that bit that didn't make a lot of sense there okay so we're now starting to have some useful data here um, and I'm going to save the model at this stage so the way you do that is it, this is just a file based uh, piece of software it's not a database so you just go file save as you've got uh, you can either save it as simply as a file or as a template I'm just going to go as a file to start off with and then um, I want to go back to my training directory and then my info drainage uh, and then I'm into my save work here directory and I'm going to call it exercise one okay save that okay so I've got I've got the file saved got my basic data set up okay the next thing we're going to do then is um, we're gonna change the color of this so show you how you have control over what the color that this appears as so if there's a variety of ways of doing this we can do it from here we can right click on the from the tree view and go into display settings there's also the display settings from the um, top um, plan view actually it doesn't appear in there we, we must have changed it so the way you get to it is from the tree view and then display settings get into it from there now one of the first things that you have the choice over is what type of data do you want to display so we've got this full surface color fill with the various different colors here if I just switch that off a second I can then switch on the original data so those are the there's there's the Eastings and Northings data points that I was talking about and just so you understand what the software is doing kind of behind the scenes is it forms a series of triangles a mesh uh, based on those points and then anywhere at all within the boundary of this surface it will be able to calculate a level based on linear interpolation so where the points are very close together it's very easy to uh, you know you've got the three levels there it's interpolating between them weighted averages to give us the level at any point um, where we haven't got so much data the triangles are larger the mesh elements are larger um, so we have a lesser accurate estimation of the level at these points when your data points are further apart but that's what it's doing behind the scenes uh, it's linear interpolation based on the points that it has okay probably don't need to see those all the triangles the main one I'm interested in is just this color fill and then um, from there you get to choose which type of color fill which type of thematic map based on the level that you're interested in so it's up to you Ch choose whatever color I, I like this rainbow one I think it works well we can see that we're using levels somewhere between 30 and sort of 50 meters elevation in this now this is one example where sometimes we kind of go overboard and give users too much flexibility if you really want to change the point at which blue changes to purple then you can you just drag these these sliders around 
you can also choose not to display um, levels below a certain certain height if you restrict this minimum or restrict to the maximum you can also which is very useful choose um, we're going to be creating stuff on top of this and you can choose to what extent it kind of obscures the stuff here so opaque and transparent works well as well okay so get a color scheme that you're comfortable with choose a transparency and then uh, just close it and it'll take you back to this I'm going to view extents again to take me back to the model so that's um, that's basically how we work with surface data Re really simple import it save it and then trim it if necessary okay now the next data that we work with all the time is going to be some sort of background data to show us where our development is where we want our suds features to exist all that kind of stuff so again can be done at any stage but useful to do it now is we're going to import some sort of background mapping data and you can see the two principal formats that we work with is listed here in the tree view either CAD data or GIS data again in this particular example I'm going to go with CAD data so again right click on it and import data select the file and the file I'm looking for is under the data directory and it's this one called starting point so we go with that it's loaded in the data click next and you'll see we've got a typical small urban development that um, we're going to use throughout this training course we're going to design some pipes manholes storage features suds features all going to be based around this so in this case the most important thing is to get your units right if the units are wrong then it won't overlay with your surface data or anything else or you'll it'll be completely completely wrong but so make sure you get your units correct in this case we're using meters just as before any sort of CAD data we get to choose the layers we're going to use all layers in this case and so simply press finish and it should go through loads in that CAD data and because I've got my units right my CAD data appears within my surface data okay however um, rather than sort of leap in and design a whole new development I'm going to start by uh, loading just some very simple model data to allow us to create our first design so I'm going to load a second piece of CAD data so again right click on it do uh, another sorry not on the data that we just imported but on the general CAD data and go into import data again select the file and the file that we're going to work with initially is called this one this model to be digitized okay open that same process as before we get the units right choose the layers and then press finish and it brings that one in now we can hardly see that data because um, it's obscured by the other CAD information and by the surface data so we can turn off the starting point one so it's still there in the background we just can't see it we can now see the data that we're going to work with I'm also going to turn off the surface data I don't need that um, uh, or I could set it so it's very transparent but in this case I'm going to turn it off and then using the mouse wheel move in and this is the data that we're going to work on in exercise 2 so at the end of this exercise go file and save our work saved and we can proceed to exercise 2